I am going to discuss today whether a new left bundle branch block represents STEMI, and I will go over how to diagnose STEMI in the setting of left bundle branch block. The bottom line answer is no. A new left bundle branch block is not suggestive of STEMI. This is an old concept that has been disproved by modern data, and neither neither the modern ACC guidelines nor the European guidelines consider STEMI, consider left bundle branch block a STEMI equivalent. I will go over the data. A new left bundle branch block is uh, overwhelmingly a sign of chronic cardiomyopathy, whether ischemic or more commonly non-ischemic, with a dilated or hypertrophied myocardium rather than extensive acute infarction. Left bundle branch block may be first and frequently is first diagnosed in the setting of heart failure presentation or uncontrolled hypertension or valvular disease. And again, it reflects the EKG progression of cardiomyopathy, not ischemia. This is the most important message of this talk. New left bundle branch block is generally an indicator of cardiomyopathy, chronic cardiomyopathy, not acute ischemia. Uh, STEMI, and the, the, here are some of the ideas supportive of that. STEMI rarely causes left bundle branch infarction because the left bundle is supplied by both the LAD and RCA. It's dual blood supply, and therefore it's only effective in extens affected in extensive infarction. In fact, in the GUSTO-1 trial, only 1% of STEMIs had left bundle branch block on presentation. Modern data have shown that only up to 10% of patients with an ischemic presentation and a new left bundle branch block have a STEMI equivalent, which is defined as acute coronary occlusion on angiography. In fact, STEMI is even far less likely when all comers with a new left bundle branch block, both typical and atypical presentations are included. So even when they are presenting with chest pain, and a new left bundle branch block, overwhelmingly the diagnosis is not STEMI. These are some of the references supporting those ideas. So where did this idea of considering a new left bundle branch block a STEMI equivalent come from? This comes from early thrombolytic trials and their meta-analysis, which have shown a striking benefit from thrombolytic therapy in patients with any bundle branch block, more than patients without bundle branch block. Interestingly, both right and left bundle branch block, if secondary to STEMI, represented high-risk category in those trials. And actually, both right bundle and left bundle branch block were are as harmful in a STEMI context. However, since only left bundle branch block pose, poses a diagnostic challenge, only a new or presumably new left bundle branch block had been considered the STEMI equivalent in old ACC guidelines. The idea there is to avoid missing a high risk STEMI. So, here is just some EKG ideas. Right bundle branch block per se is not associated with significant ST abnormality. And thus, it's easy to analyze ischemia and right bundle branch block. ST changes in a patient with right bundle branch block are diagnostic of ischemia. ST elevation is diagnostic of ST elevation MI. This is because the RV mass is smaller than the LV mass and thus, RV issues, whether RVH or right bundle branch block, by themselves translate into smaller depolarization and smaller repolarization issues. And therefore, right bundle branch block, like RVH, by themselves, they do not cause significant ST elevation. 
Conversely, left bundle branch block by itself is associated inherently with ST segment deviation that is in opposite direction to QRS, which is what we call discordant to QRS. And this poses diagnostic challenges for STEMI and non-STEMI. So this is an EKG example. You can see here in leads V1 and V3, uh, you can see in those leads, uh, QRS is down and ST is elevated. In the lateral leads, QRS is up and ST is down here. QRS is up here and ST is down. Now, if a patient has an ischemic presentation and left bundle branch block on the EKG, one cannot tell whether this ST elevation is purely secondary to the left bundle branch block, this ST elevation, uh, whether an ischemic injury is partially contributing to the ST elevation, or if there is ischemic ST depression masked by the ST elevation. This particular patient did not have a STEMI, by the way, and I will go over criteria that can help in this setting. Since again, a new left bundle branch block is not by itself considered a STEMI. So this is a patient with left bundle branch block. He has concordant ST elevation in leads one and AVL. You see the QRS is up and ST segment is up. QRS is up. ST segment is up, whereas it should normally be down with left bundle branch block. This concordant ST elevation is definitely indicative of enterolateral STEMI in this patient in conjunction with some of the expected ST elevation in V1, V3. I will go over a little, a few more criteria from this EKG, uh, a few, few slides from now. This is an example of concordant ST depression in a patient with left bundle branch block, meaning the QRS is down and the ST segment is down. This is also indicative of STEMI uh, in a patient who also otherwise have ST elevation in some other leads. So again, concordant ST depression. Concordance is an ominous sign in left bundle branch block. Now, not just a T segment concordance is ominous, but actually negative T wave concordance is also suggestive of, of STEMI, although less strongly than concordant ST segment. Meaning if you have a negative T or T wave inversion concordant to a negative QRS, this is suggestive of STEMI. And those are three examples that show that. Even when the ST segment is discordant, in this particular case, you have QRS is down, ST is up. The ST here is not helpful. It's not indicative of STEMI. Conversely, the fact that T is inverted rather than upright as in the, as, and is in the same direction of, as QRS, this is a strongly suggestive of ischemia and specifically STEMI in this case. Again, it's not as reliable as concordance of the ST segment, but this is something that should be taken into account. Look in this example, also negative T wave concordant to QRS in this example as well. A patient, unfortunately, may have a STEMI with no concordance of ST or T. He may just, he may have a STEMI and just a discordant ST elevation. For example, discordant ST elevation in leads V1 through V4. How can you make a STEMI diagnosis in this case? We do know that concordance is not very sensitive. It's super specific, close to 100%, especially ST segment concordance, but it's not, but it's not sensitive. So in this case, we can analyze discordance we can see okay we have a negative qrs and we have uh, an upright st segment which is expected in left bundle branch block but is there a degree of upright st segment that would exceed what's expected 
Garbosa has suggested a discordant criterion of five millimeter in the 1990s, uh, meaning if you have an SC segment that is opposite direction to QRS, but that exceeds five millimeter, this could be suggestive of STEMI. However, whether in the original publication in the 1990s or now we know well that this is poorly specific and actually even poorly sensitive for STEMI. In fact, 10 to 15% of left bundle branch blocks with no STEMI have 5 millimeter ST discordance. This is based on multiple studies that I will show in the next slides. Those are the studies showing that. And in fact, what those studies have shown, including uh, one um, study I did at Louisiana State University, is that the better criterion for discordance is a discordance ratio, is relative discordance of ST to QRS exceeding 25%. So the better criterion is the relative, not the absolute discordance, not this Garbosa five millimeter discordance. I think the five millimeter discordance should be abandoned by today's standard. It's poorly sensitive and poorly specific. This particular EKG is a good example. This is a patient who had a STEMI actually with uh, RCA occlusion. If you look at this EKG, he had left bundle branch block. He had discordant ST segment, okay? He had discordant ST elevation. But that discordant ST elevation did not exceed 5 millimeter, okay? In neither of those leads. Yet it definitely exceeded 25%, especially in lead AVF. So the relative discordance made the diagnosis of STEMI in this patient, not the absolute discordance. Those are some other examples. On this EKG, the absolute ST segment discordant in lead V2 exceeds five millimeter, but the ratio is less than 25%. In fact, the ratio is barely 10% as this patient has a huge S, S wave. Look at that S wave in V2. It reaches all the way down to, uh, to here. You know, it exceeds V3. So the QRS, so the uh, actually the relative ST discordance is very low, even though the absolute number is over five millimeter. And that attests to the poor specificity of that feature. The prior slide attested to the poor sensitivity. This slide attests to the poor specificity of this feature of five millimeters. This is another example again of uh, a patient who has a huge S wave and huge QRS in lead V3. And the ST segment is elevated and discordant, but it does not, but it does not exceed 25%. It does exceed five millimeter, but it does not exceed 25%. And while this EKG overall seems scary, this patient actually had severe hypertension and severely decompensated non-ischemic heart failure. He did not have CAD on his coronary angiogram, and he did not have a STEMI. This is from the patient I showed earlier. Not only he, did, he had concordant ST elevation in leads 1 and AVL, he actually had discordant ST elevation in leads V2 uh, through V4, that discordance did not exceed 5 millimeter, but it did exceed 25%, particularly in lead V2. And again, this patient had an enterolateral STEMI with an occluded LAD on angiogram. Another way of looking at it, if the ST elevation is way too high for the side of QRS, more than 25%, definitely if it's more than 50%, but like in this case, it's almost 50%. But if it's over more than, if it is over 25%, that's already quite suggestive of STEMI. It's not as specific as concordant ST elevation. And you may be able to see that feature in a few percent of patients 
with left bundle branch block and no STEMI. Yet it's definitely more suggestive than the absolute five millimeter discordance. This is another example of uh, this time of discordant a huge T wave. So this patient has left bundle branch block with discordant ST segment uh, that ST segment elevation that does not meet any criteria for STEMI, neither relative nor absolute. However, he had another interesting finding that is not much talked about, which is the size of the discordant T wave. The T wave is very wide, fused with the ST in almost one dome. That's a look that's very concerning for STEMI. And also, the T wave uh, size approximates or exceeds the QRS. Look at the T wave here. It's almost it's equal to the side of QRS, and it exceeds the side of QRS in lead V5. Similarly, in lead 2, it approximates the side of QRS. T wave that approximates or exceeds the QRS size outside the QRS transition zone is also strongly suggestive of STEMI. This patient had an occluded left anterior descending artery. In other terms, this is the hyperacute T wave that is seen in particular in the setting of left bundle branch block. This is another example of a large concordant T wave in lead V6, larger than the QRS, consistent with uh, enterolateral injury. Note that all of the criteria I discussed of concordance and relative discordance may be applied to patients with ventricular pacing as well, although less well established. I want to briefly mention the role of echo in a patient presenting with chest pain and in new left bundle branch block. Abnormal septal motion is universal with left bundle branch block, and therefore it does not imply ischemia. However, the apical contraction is preserved. Therefore, apical akinesis may imply ischemia. Keep in mind that this does not have to be and is not necessarily a STEMI type of ischemia, it could be non STEMI, and keep in mind that this ischemia may not even be acute, it could be just a chronic ischemic cardiomyopathy. Also, keep in mind that you need to obtain a proper apical, uh, proper apical views that open, open the apex properly and don't limit your analysis to the septal or anterior wall. Another idea is a global, if you find global hypokinesis on echo, that does not imply acute ischemia. It often is a chronic ischemic or non-ischemic cardiomyopathy, such as hypertensive cardiomyopathy or even valvular cardiomyopathy, rather than acute ischemia. Coronary angiography may be needed eventually, but is not urgent. I will finish with the statements from the guidelines regarding a new left bundle branch block in a patient presenting with chest pain. The 2013 STEMI guidelines state that a new or a presumably new left bundle branch block should not be considered diagnostic of acute myocardial infarction in isolation. The 2020 European ACS guidelines state that hemodynamically stable patients presenting with chest pain and left bundle branch block only have a slightly higher risk of having MI compared to patient without left bundle branch block. Again, remember that a new left bundle branch block is usually a sign of progressive chronic cardiomyopathy, not acute ischemia. Thank you.